Hey everyone, we're back, and in this series of tutorials, the first one we looked at was how to, um, just kind of like an overall look at Cine Designer, the different trucks, how to bring in a location, and how to bring in a dolly. And then in the last episode, we looked at how to actually light, and we used the most simple light I have, which is a T1, which is a, a simulation of a Fresnel, and we looked at lighting, and we turned on global illumination, which you're going to need for space lights, for kino flows, a lot of things need global illumination. And if you're getting funny um, results, things that you're not expecting, we'll have to go over that in more depth in uh, further episodes about lighting, because lighting in the computer, there's some settings, there's things you have to kind of know to get it to look right. But hopefully you were encouraged enough with just the stock stuff that I've shown you already, and you're playing around, um, that it's worth investing the time in. You'll be able to get um, eventually very realistic looking results to communicate cinematography and it's it's a lot of fun i i love this and i, I use it professionally for work now um so let's keep going so right now we're going to look at how to animate these things so say you want to show someone a camera move or you want to show yourself a camera move you want to start playing with camera moves let's do that so we're going to go to locations let's bring in our psych wall and let's bring in a techno crane and i love how fast that system is it's so quick it's really fast even maya loads a little bit slower than that so let's bring our techno crane back 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 like this, it's a big techno crane. This is the Super Techno 30 um, representation. Let's go to panel. I like side by side, depending on how big your monitor is, you might want to do something else, I don't know. Um, camera, I really got to automate this. This is like so painful to do this every time, for me anyway. Though it does reinforce you actually understanding Cinema 4D. Shift V, go like that. Cameras, display, garage, yes, okay. So now we're actually looking through the thing. So we can move the whole crane around, but you know, you can put a super techno on track. It's just not that likely. Um, kind of the idea with the techno crane is to not need track because uh, you can just move it wherever you want. So let's do that. Let's move it wherever we want. So let's select the techno crane. I'm going to bring it down here. Um, here's our controls. So the first control pans the head, the remote head. Enough. you've never used a techno crane, this might be just kind of weird in general for you, but uh, for the people who use techno cranes and you want to play with them, this is the way. There's really no other solution for this out there in the world that I know of. Um, that's commercial anyway. So this is panning the remote head at the end of the crane. Uh, I guess I'll zoom in just to show you. Woo! There it is. Um, so we're panning the remote head back here. Um, just like you would expect. Up and down. Full length is 25. I like 25 for techno crane moves a lot of the times. Uh, so let's zoom back. Okay, I'm under the ground. Also, here's the thing. So if you end up under the ground like this and you're like, I'm so stuck, you can do two things. You can hit H. H will frame everything in the scene. It'll kind of zoom you back to get you like get your bearings. Or you can hit S. And S will focus the camera on whatever you have selected. So remember H and S. Really important because you can get stuck sometimes in Cinema 4D and it's kind of annoying. Um, so here is moving the whole arm, panning it. Here's booming up and down or tilting. Uh, you'll see that it is clipping through the floor. Uh, that's because you can actually change the center column height like you could in the real world. That's how you would do that. So it made the center column height kind of tall. And let's just make a move. Oh, and we forgot the most fun part. The part that's the most important is um, actually extending this thing out. So that's how much the Technocrane actually extends a Super Techno 30. This is modeled to scale from CADs uh, and have having worked on them with Technocranes before, it's very accurate. So say we want this to move. So let's go over quickly animation. So down here is the timeline. It's just like your NLE, like Final Cut, if you're still using Final Cut, or Premiere, or Avid, um, or After Effects, anything like that. It's the same thing. So we go to frame one, and we're going to choose our position for the camera. And then we're going to go to frame 90 and choose our position for the camera there too. I think the frame rate is 30 frames per second right now. You can change it to 24 if you want. It doesn't really matter in previs as much. Um, I mean, it does, but it's, it, I don't think it's that important. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to tilt down. It's kind of a weird angle already. And I'm going to zero this out. Oh, it's because, are we centered? So let's do, let's just play around. Let's find an angle you like, okay? You find an angle you like, I'll find an angle that I like. Uh, let's tilt down. That's fine. So what we're going to do now, so now we have to make sure that the, the, the time marker over here is at zero. And what you're going to do is for all of these different axes or channels or controls, you have to what's called key them. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That was it. That's, that's all there is to it. You're going to click this little button next to it. 
And it's going to turn red. And I'm not going to key these two because I'm not going to change those or animate those uh, mid-shot. Nor would you... Well, no, I guess you could change the focal length, but you definitely would not change the center column mid-shot. So let's move the playhead all the way down to 90. And let's choose our second position, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this move... Oh, what happened? Where am I? Is this what I wanted? You know, I'm going to change this again. So this is good to show. I want to be higher. I want to bring the arm up and I want to tilt down. So because I've changed those keys, I have to re-key over them. I think. I'm not amazing at animation in Cinema 4D yet. Um, but that's what I believe has to happen. So to go to 2 now, I would like to go back to kind of like a wide level shot. So I'm going to extend, retract in a bit on the arm. I'm going to bring the camera down with this. And I'm going to tilt up like that. Okay, so we're going to have to re-key all of these. So you'll see these two little blue squares. That means that there's keys on those frames. So you can scrub through like this and you can see the camera move. So that is our camera move. If I hit play, it will play in the active viewport. So that's this one. Uh, you can move the camera depending on how good your computer is. Deselect and kind of look at a, a very cool behind the scenes of what that move would look like. And then of course we can go to the camera and look through it. Also very cool. So that is the basics of animation uh, in Cinema 4D and how you animate the controls in, Cine, uh, in Cine Designer. You'll only really ever need to control animate the position and rotation of an object or those controls and it'll basically work like the real world. Um, and that's the power of it. You're not going to have to deal with a lot of the intricacies of how a system like this is made. You just have to change the things that you know how to change in the real world. And you can do them here. You can do this with lighting if you wanted to, and you can do that with the cameras to build camera moves. It's pretty easy. It does take a little bit of time. Even myself, I'm still learning things about 3D animation, especially in Cinema 4D, because I'm still uh, relatively new to it. But it's something that you can research on your own. Go to YouTube and find um, tutorials on animation, Digital Tutors Plural site, um, FX PhD. There's a lot of places to learn um, to further your learning into animation because I'm not going to be teaching you like character animation and, and how to do curve tweening and stuff like that. I mean, maybe at some point down the road I'll be getting to that, but I want to get to more things that are not taught anywhere else in the world. Um, like how to build a room to scale, put a camera in it and light it like you would in the real world. That's stuff that I'm interested in, not so much how do I animate someone doing the Macarena. Um, just did it myself uh, accurately. So that is our... Um, quick quick overview of cine designer we brought in our demo scene which i definitely recommend using uh, if you're not good at 3d modeling yet um, we looked at um looking through the camera we brought in our first light we turned on global illumination remember to turn on global illumination um and then we did a quick camera move using our techno crane so in the very 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 first series we looked at the basics of cinema 4d and in this this is going to conclude this um, mini series on how to use Cine Designer. Uh, I think in the next episodes, um, the next series of episodes, what I'm going to start to do is actually previs scenes. And it's going to get a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to necessarily go step by step through everything, but I hopefully have given you an overview so that you can keep learning Cine Designer and Cinema 4D on your own. But I will continue to put out tutorials and episodes on kind of the high level of how to use it. And you'll pick up here and there um, some of the intricacies, some of the little clicky things that you have to learn, ask questions, um, all that good stuff. Ask people in the community who are using Cine Designer. Ask anyone that uses Cinema 4D, how do you do these things? There's a lot of communities out there. Of course, the cinematography database community is going to be the strongest for actually using this for planning real world shoots. So I will see you on the next episode and maybe we'll model a room. Maybe we'll bring in some furniture. Uh, we'll start to make some actual scenes and plan them out like they were real shoots. So I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye.